This video started back at the end of the summer, during a heat wave of more than 45 Celsius degrees. We were about to continue working on the house and realized that our tent was completely gone. This was the second fabric that we bought for it, but less than a month after, the strong sun had gone through it like it was paper, breaking it into hundreds of small pieces. We had to spend close to 400 euros in the tent and an extra 130 euros in the second fabric that we bought for it. But unfortunately, our weather is too harsh for this type of tents. This is the first time in three years that we buy something instead of building it. And that's the result. With the material already at home, I offloaded all the profiles from the vans rack. I bought 8 pieces of 6 meters of 40 by 2 millimeters and 1 piece of 6 meters of 30 by 2 millimeters that will later fit inside the other. You will see it once we get there. Total cost for the material of the structure was 224 euros and since I've been in YouTube long enough, I will know that the 0.7% of you won't trust my word for it. So here is the invoice. I got this grinder on an online sale recently. I originally bought it to cut the concrete floors we are pouring and I got to use it here for the first time. It does a great job of cutting the profiles perfectly perpendicular. I will not use it with shorts again as it shoots big metal pieces towards you. The small grinders that I'm used to don't do that, so it got me by surprise. With the first two metal profiles cut, I set the working area up with our wooden table and two saw horses. It took me a while to get everything perfectly horizontal, which is what I'm doing here with the small yellow spirit level. Once it was all properly set, I started welding. I am a self-taught welder, I have only welded once before, but I think I got the gist of it already. I always weld only two spots per side on each profile um, before welding the whole line, that way the profiles don't move with the heat while you continue welding. Here you can see it again, a couple of spots per face and then I go and weld the whole line. I like cleaning the welding job on any side that is going to be exposed to the view. I grind it with a 80 grit sanding disc until it looks good.
both of them are exactly the same, 669.5. This is a clear example of why I'm building this. All of a sudden, it starts raining. It starts raining and I need to rush. Taking a quick moment to introduce today's video sponsor, Surfshark. I think having a VPN is a must nowadays. It is the only way to keep your online identity safe. A VPN encrypts the information that is sent from your device to the internet. This keeps your data protected from big companies or cyber criminals. It also swaps the real location of your device with a new one. This way you can trick the internet to make it think that you are in a different country or city to, for example, access and unblock Netflix libraries that are exclusive to other countries. And when using a free public Wi-Fi, which can be a goldmine for hackers, Surfshark encrypts your online data and helps to secure your personal information. And they do not monitor, track, or store any of your online activity. Get an exclusive Surfshark holiday deal. Enter the promo code MHC deal to get up to six additional months for free at surfshark.deals slash mhc deal all right so we're back dry again on the next day here i'm finding the center of the structure so i can weld our reinforcement piece here what i'm doing is just removing the galvanized coat if you get steel without the galvanized protection then you don't need to do that I had to get creative to hold it in place using the clamps with a piece of wood. It is always a good idea to repaint the welded joints with a galvanized spray paint. I am sure it won't be as durable as the actual coat the steel has, but it protects it from starting to rust right away. All right, guys, I kind of cheated on you this morning and came to work without filming just because yesterday it was raining the whole day and I couldn't get to work and also I went for a run, my long run of the week which is yesterday was around 23-24 kilometers and I wasn't feeling like working at the building site and this morning I came and did all this there are a small like 45 centimeters leg that will facilitate us install this structure by ourselves because um, I mean if we had five or six guys we could probably just move it around and, and do it together but since I have Eugenia and Eugenia also lately is suffering from her back so I don't want her carrying extra weight that is not 100% necessary so we're gonna use these smaller legs to, to help us raise the structure and put the actual final legs in place To my surprise, the welding job I did for these small legs was very strong. I did not grind the welding this time since I needed them to be as strong as possible to hold what I was about to do to them next.
right, I'm gonna go grab breakfast because I haven't eaten anything today yet. Also, I will be posting a new video in YouTube today because it's Sunday and it's Sunday that we actually post videos because we don't post every Sunday just because, you know, you need to be able to work in order to have content. And um, if you do everything by yourself, uh, it's imp almost impossible to post every Sunday just because there's no enough hours in the week to build, make progress and also edit. We'll ask Eugenia to help me move the structure so I can place it uh, where it belongs. This open end here really bothered me, so I tried covering them. I cut a few squares out of a scrap piece of metal from the cabin build and tried to weld it. Unfortunately, I soon realized that welding such a thin profile this way with the two millimeters thickness looking at me was not possible, at least with my skill level. I, just, I was just burning right through it, so I had to face this small fail and continue. Moving the structure was a challenge. As I said, I don't have workers helping, but fortunately I have Eugenia and the volunteer, which are a very strong combo. This felt a little bit sketchy and I was not really sure if the small legs we're going to support the load. We had a little bit of a tension moment. The volunteer was helping us moving this. And um it was, it was smooth, I would say. Eugenia was scared, I was not. I didn't damage her body, I just damaged the volunteer's body and mine. <laughs> so please, hater, do not hate me today. Now that the structure was in place, I needed to install the final legs. The ground was not even at all, so I had two options, either cutting each leg to a different length or cutting all the legs at the same length and dig holes. Since this is a temporary structure that will be moved once we finish the house, I decided to go with the second option. This hole had to be dug the deepest and the other ones did not really need to be dug much. Now I leave you with how I raised the structure. Eugenia was busy, so I had to figure a way of doing it alone with the volunteer. Might be working, I don't know.
As you could see, I used the small legs as guides for the final ones. That way, the structure could be held in place even before I weld the final legs. I was very proud of seeing that it actually worked. I was not 100% sure it would work. A couple of hours later, I was able to level up all the legs. Well, level up. I put the three on the back a little bit lower, so the whole thing slopes slightly to the back. So when it rains, I don't get water in front. I only get water at the back. And now, as you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, to be honest, but um, the legs are not perfectly vertical. Like this one is a little bit in. So I will need to move this leg little bit to the right. I realized that um, if we would have made it a tad taller, the volunteer could have slept inside. Ah, now looking back and having had this structure for a few weeks, I am happy that we did not make it taller. Um, when it rains here, it always rains sideways. And making it taller would have meant not being very protected from the rain. Here I stuck the magnetic level to the leg and welded the leg to the structure while constantly checking the level to make sure that I was welding it perfectly vertical. Now I need to make sure that I somehow I hold the leg in place in the ground. So I drove a piece of rebar to the ground and welded the bottom of the leg to it. Eugenia and I went back and forth with what color of roof we wanted to use. We toyed with the idea of making it white so the sun will not heat it up too much. But in the end, we went for galvanized steel. I wanted to use galvanized steel for the exterior of the cabin. I really like this material. Mm, the cabin ended up being black. So finally, after three years, I got to use it for a project.
point here, since it doesn't have a leg, it's sagging a little bit, I already know that. The idea of having this whole six meters open so we can put panels or pieces of wood and, and walk in and out of the shaded area without a vertical pole here blocking the access, I think it's worth it, to be honest. I mean, it's just aesthetic issue right now for me because this is strong enough to support the load that we're gonna put on top. But um, it's bothering me a little bit. putting the screws on the lower wave. I know if you're doing a proper roofing, it will need to go on the upper side of the wave, just so you're a little bit more secure uh, with water going in. Uh, so don't get too professional with me, I already know that, but I decided to put it on the low part of the wave just because it's stronger. We bought six metal sheets um, for a total of 209 euros. So this structure cost us a total of 433 euros. We can make it 450 euros rounding it up if we include the one spray paint can and a few welding rods, which is still cheaper than the fabric tent that we had. Uh, I mean, I needed to put time, of course, but uh, I don't know you, but I don't charge myself. Being honest, I like this material very much, but um, the sheets were left one on top of the other under the rain for a few days, and humidity created some sort of white layer on all the sheets except for the top and bottom one. You can see it here in this shot. I did some research and it could be clean with a special soap, but I think doing the cabin in black was a good decision after all. Guys, change of plans because I really don't like how this is sagging and this structure is gonna be with us while we build the house, it's gonna be a long time so I just don't wanna be seeing this all the time so unfortunately I'm gonna need to put another leg in here. That was the last day and Eugenia came to help getting this area ready to continue building the house. She spread a layer of gravel so it does not get muddy when it rains while I finished welding the middle leg and I organized all the form boards that we will use in the concrete floor that we will build in the next episode.